Hi, let us understand more details about tokens. Till now we were using the root token which was having all the privileges and as an admin I can create my own tokens and there are different type of tokens available like service token and batch token. Service tokens generally it will be persisted in the sense it will be stored using the token store which is responsible for creating and storing the tokens. The same way we can create another type of token called patch token which is not persisted or stored within the token store. The token itself will be having the details about the token and that will be available as a blob content. And the root token that is getting created as a part of the init process will be having some properties like it will never get expired and the root policy will get attached to it. And the root token can be created by multiple ways. One is while doing the initialization and another by creating a root token using another root token or there is another process called generate root operator. That is using the Shami's distributed key, I can generate my own root token. When the tokens are getting created, I can create a hierarchy like a top level token. Under that, I can create sub tokens or child tokens. The child token again can create multiple child token. Whenever the token is getting revoked, all its child token will also get revoked along with their leases. I can create token without hierarchy as well that is called orphan token. Orphan token will not have parents. Orphan tokens are root to themselves. And while creating the token, it's going to give another ID called token accessor. This token accessor is like an alias and I can use this particular token accessor to get the tokens properties, what are all capabilities it's having in which path and I can renew a token using the accessor token or revoke the permission for the token using this accessor. Basically, this will be used to act as a reference to the actual token and it will not get recorded along with the history when I am using it. And while creating the token, I can set this time to live period, which is going to determine the token's duration. And because the root token will never get expired, the TTL will be zero. And once the TTL time crosses, the token will not be usable or it will not have the permission that we have set against the token. And I can have a maximum TTL of 32 days. Once the token is renewed, the TTL will be set accordingly and on that particular TTL, automatically the token will get expired. The similar way we can create another type of token called periodic token where it will get renewed automatically at regular interval. So it will not have a maximum TTL and uh, the TTL once it is expired automatically it will get renewed. Mostly this periodic token will be used by the system and the system automatically it will renew before the expiry time. Most of the time this particular periodic token will be created and uh, it will be used for system to system communication. In case if that particular system is not using this particular token automatically it will get expired and uh, it will be safe for the system and whenever it is required it can renew it. The same way like how the service token can get created we can use the match token as well. Match token it will not involve any cost because it doesn't need to get stored within the system so it's going to give better performance because all the information about the token will be stored within the token id itself as a blob but it has some restrictions like it cannot be a root token we cannot create child tokens and cannot be renewed or it cannot be a periodic token and it will not have the accessor as such so this is a quick overview on different type of tokens and how the token can be an orphan token or how the hierarchy will be working within it we will be having a demo on different type of tokens in the next lecture.